Good evening. A special welcome to our guests and visitors today. As we gather together, we focus on our theme, Lord, increase our faith. And as the Lord increases our faith, He increases our dependence on Him. And we realize we can't depend on ourselves, that we can't get to heaven by ourselves, that we need Jesus to save us and bring us to our heavenly home. So we ask God to bless our worship today, and we begin with our opening hymn. Please stand. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, for it is evening, and the day is almost done. Let your light scatter the darkness. Let it shine in our hearts and lives. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we have been bought back from sin, death, and hell. By the perfect life and innocent death of Jesus Christ, in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, keep your household in continual godliness and set us free from all adversity. Under your protection, we may true devotion and holy deeds. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We join in reading the psalm of the day. The psalm for today is Psalm 139b. I will praise you, O Lord. For I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. Your eyes saw my unformed body. 
I will praise you, O Lord, for I am wonderfully made. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will praise you, O Lord, for I am wonderfully made. The first lesson for today is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 to 22. In his farewell address, Moses reminds the Israelites that they always have been and forever will be totally dependent on God's grace. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them. And he chose you, their descendants, above all the nations, as is is today. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of the lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no par- partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oath in his name. He is the one who you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors who went down into Egypt were 70 in all. And now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. St. John encourages us to love and depend on our Heavenly Father, not the world. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand our respect for the gospel. The gospel of today is Luke chapter 18, verses 18 to 30. This will also serve as our sermon text for today. What is possible with, with man, it, what is impossible with man is possible with God. That is why we are totally dependent on him. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Then he heard this. He became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all that we had to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, 
No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When you hear the word dependence, what do you think? Sometimes I kind of wonder if we view that word dependence as something that's not, not very good. Maybe you've gotten burned when, when you've depended on someone. And so now you think, how, how can I rely on them? Well, will they even follow through? Will they do what they say? And then what happens? Maybe we struggle to depend on others. Maybe to have that trust, that reliance. Maybe we kind of dig deep in ourselves and, and think, you know, I'm just going to do it. I'll do it well and get it done. What's happening? Often we find ourselves depending on ourselves, on me, right? Right? But is dependence a, a, a bad thing? I don't think so. In a couple of months, we'll be, God willing, having a, another little baby boy. And who is that lady, baby boy going to depend on? Mommy and Daddy. And probably a little bit more on Mommy, <laughs> since she'll be the one feeding them and, and probably taking care of them in different ways than I can. Um, you know, but that baby depends on his parents. And it's not just the baby, but it's also our, our two other boys. They depend on us, right? To make sure they have a home, that they're fed, that they have a bed to sleep in, and so much more. But it's not just the kids that have this dependency, but it's also mom and dad, husband and wife. Elise and I depend on each other um, to help out each other, to be there for each other. Maybe you can kind of think about some of these different kinds of relationships in the ways that people rely on you or you rely on someone else. But just because we have this kind of bad view sometimes in our head because we've been burned, because we've depended on someone, it doesn't make it bad. It makes it good. And especially as Christians, we want to depend on someone who is important. We want to depend on God. And not just a little bit, not just some, but totally. We want to depend on God all the way. And that's kind of what we're thinking today. We want to depend on Him, the one who matters. As we jump into Luke chapter 18, where our te text is, if you would start at the first few verses of 18, you'll see like two parables. One of the parables was one that we heard last week with the, the lady who was persistent with the judge and kept going to him over and over and over again until he listened. The, the next parable is of the Pharisee and the tax collector. I think many of us know this kind of parable where you have the Pharisee up in front and saying, Lord, look how good I am. And then you have the tax collector in the back saying, Lord, have mercy on me. You know, where is their dependence, right? Well, the Pharisee's dependence was on himself and the tax collector was on his Lord. And, and then we get to our text for today and it's not another parable. 
We see this encounter between this man and Jesus. We, we hear this. A certain man, uh, a certain ruler, asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So we're, we get a little bit of information about this person. He is a ruler, but we don't know a ruler of what. Uh, there's some guesses that people have made, and you know, but we don't really have much detail on him. We don't have a name. We, we don't know where he's from. There's not some kind of historical bio on him. We're just told this man came up and asked Jesus a, a, a question. And, you know, essentially, we might kind of wonder, you know, what kind of question would this man have, right? Maybe he was coming because he wanted to know, you know, could he be healed of some disease? Could Jesus raise somebody from the dead? No. He asked this question, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You kind of wonder how long this man had been thinking about this question. How, how long was he up at night, you know, pondering the answer? You know, how do I inherit eternal life? Um, I can't help but think of the reformer Martin Luther, who, who kind of essentially struggled with this question for most of his life until he came across the truth, you know, of Scripture alone. But essentially, he too was wondering, you know, ha have I done enough? How do I get into heaven? You know, what kind of boxes do I have to check in order to enter eternal life? You know, this man is going through those same kind of questions. But often when we kind of answer these questions from kind of an earthly standpoint, there's two different camps. One camp, it, it kind of leads a person into despair. You know, how can I ever, you know, earn eternal life? I, I'm not that good of a person. I don't deserve that. How do I know I've done enough? Or in the other camp, maybe it's kind of boastfulness and pride. I, I am a good person. I'm better than a lot of other people. I have lived a pretty good life. But where is the focus, right? Where is the, the focus is on me. The dependence is on me. Not on God. So where does this man fall, right? Well, we get to see into the heart with Jesus' reaction. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, <clears throat> no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. You know, where was Jesus focusing the man? It, it seems a little strange to us, I think, a little bit, right? Because you think Jesus would focus the man on, hey, look to me, you know, focus your eyes on me. But he actually focuses the man's eyes back on himself. He, he, he takes the man's words and, and kind of plays them out. You know, hey, have you kept these commandments? Have you murdered anybody? Have you committed adultery? Have you listened to your parents? Have you honored them? You know, how would you answer it? Maybe some people would be tempted to answer the, this question kind of with, well, you know, I haven't killed anybody. You know, I haven't committed adultery. And I, I've listened to my parents, right? Essentially, that's kind of the answer that this man gives, right? All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. The man thought he had kept all the things of the commandments, he, he, even the, the man made laws. He has lived a pretty good life. He thought he had checked all of the boxes. And, and many from the society maybe would think that too. Oh, he, he's a well put together guy. He, he's a ruler. He has responsibilities. Uh, he's got his finances in order, his life in order. And, and maybe you would even want your daughter to marry him. Everybody kind of viewed him very highly, even himself. But Jesus doesn't necessarily say what we think he would say next. You would maybe expect Jesus to say, hey, you know, if you look at your thoughts, you know, you, you probably thought you, you hated someone. <laughs> Remember that guy that you hated? Or, or that lady that you looked at as she was walking down the street, you looked at her the wrong way? Or, or remember when you didn't listen to your parents when you were eight? Do you remember that? But Jesus doesn't go about it that way. He kind of actually goes about it in a different way, and it seems like he 
kind of goes for the jugular in some ways, going after, after the issue that the man really struggled with. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Oh no, <laughs> he probably thought. I don't know if I could do that. Uh, Jesus, I have a lot of wealth, and you're asking me to give it all up and give it to the poor and then follow you? You know, Jesus, if you asked me to give a lot of money to the local synagogue, I could do that. That would be pretty easy. If you wanted me to give time, I could do that, Jesus. But give my, up ever, everything, all my riches, all the things I have gathered into my life, give that up to the poor and follow you? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I, I, want to follow you. I want to follow you, but essentially, if you're going to require me to do this, I, I don't know. And maybe then, it shouldn't surprise us what happens next. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. He wasn't going to give it up. Where was his heart? It was on his wealth. It was on the money in his bank account. It was on the, pos on the possessions at his home. All of that. He didn't want to give it up for the one who was standing in front of him, his Savior. No wonder he was sad. Because under the, the current circumstances, he realized where his heart was. Not on his God, but on the worldly things. But what Jesus says next is truth, but it seems like a hard truth. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. If a person depends on themselves, if a person depends on their riches, they will never inherit the kingdom of God. I think for the example that Jesus gives, I think many people know this one. You know, maybe because it's very visual. It has this stark contrast between two things. You know, you have this camel and then the eye of a needle. You know, what does Jesus mean when he's saying, you know, a camel can't go through the eye of a needle? Like the, the rich man that can't enter eternal life. You know, if you think about it, you, no matter how hard you push on that camel, you're not going to get it through. You're not going to get it through that little hole, no matter how much effort you put in behind it. If a person is dependent on themselves and their riches to gain eternal life, it is not going to happen. If a person depends on themselves, they will not get into heaven. Now imagine if you were the disciples, right? And the people standing around, and you just witnessed this. You have this clean, well put together, well <laughs> successful kind of a guy. You know, what would you be thinking as you see him? You know, maybe you would have the same reaction as the crowd. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Maybe he would have said something like this, or maybe you would think, he isn't getting in? How is he not getting in? If he's not getting in, there's no way I'm going to enter through the gates of heaven. He is so much better than I. He is such more successful than I. If he never gets through the gate of heaven, there, there's no way that I will. But again, you know, those are good questions, good things to think about. But what's really at the heart of it all? Who are we depending on? Is it God? Or ourselves. Uh, maybe a little piece of us is like, you know, this rich man, well, how could you not give up everything and follow Jesus? But maybe you have found yourself falling into the same kind of traps. 
Maybe you have found yourself kind of looking at your successes and your accomplishments. Maybe you are, are, are tempted to count the, the money that's in the bank or, or the, the toys that you have had and, and all the things that you have accumulated in your life. Look how good I am. Look how successful I am. And then maybe at the same time, if you kind of think, well, if I can accomplish this life here on earth, then I should be able to accomplish eternal life on my own. I can do it <laughs> by what I do and what I say. I live a pretty good life. You know, I, I keep the commandments, but we're blinded with our eyes closed to our failures, our, our sins, our mistakes. Maybe we are just blinded like the, the rich man to where our heart likes to go. Maybe it's someone else, something else in this world instead of our God. Or maybe when the law hits us, we end up kind of thinking, you know, how, how could I get in? How do I know I've done enough? Or, you know, I... I, I have done all these terrible things in my life and I'm ashamed of it. There's no way that God would want me to come in. It seems impossible. It seems like shoving a camel through the eye of a needle. But it all depends on God. It depends on our Savior. Not on us. Again, let's go back to what that crowd said. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Does Jesus say, yep, you're right. No one can be saved. No, he does not. Instead, what is possible, impossible with man is possible with God. I kind of picture what Jesus is saying, like a, a neon sign. Essentially, this neon sign that's flashing, depend on me, depend on me, or, or depend on Jesus, depend on Jesus. Yeah, when, when we depend on ourselves, it is impossible for us to get into heaven. There is no way. With God, all things are possible. Like a camel going through an eye of a needle, or a rich man entering heaven or sinners like you and me entering eternal life. All things are possible with God. Maybe we think of God coming down to this earth, to us and our human minds that, that seems impossible, but here he comes as both God and man for us to live under the law, to live the perfect life, which is impossible for us to do, but it is possible with God. And there our Savior goes to the cross to do the impossible task that no man or woman could ever do. But it is possible with God to earn salvation for all people, to give life and, <laughs> and salvation and eternal life to you and to me. All things are possible with God, especially when it comes to our salvation, especially when we have that reassurance, because of him, we will enter eternal life. By faith, depend on your Savior. Depend on your Lord. Do not depend on yourself. Hand over your soul and your life to your Savior who, who has given you everything. Leave it in His hands. The one who, who can do the impossible. And we should be in this Word. To be in God's Word. To strengthen our faith and our dependence on Him. And the more we're in the Word, the more we will depend and rely on Him and trust Him fully. And it's not just us. It's also kids too. Those around us. You know, you, you think, you know, maybe for your own life, I think for mine, 
I think about my parents who have encouraged me in my Christian life all, all through my life. And they still do it. <laughs> Even though I've been moved out for several years now and have my own family. My mom still likes to text us and give us Bible passages to encourage us. And now we get to do that with our boys, right? As we get ready for bed, we sing the hymns, you know, like the one we sang at the beginning, I am Jesus' little lamb, or now the light has gone away, or praise God from whom all blessings flow. And our boys have been singing it with us for, for years now, even though if they're, they're four and two. Um, you can't start too young. They, they, they know the words. They, they look forward to singing it at night. So what are you teaching them? You're, you're teaching them dependence on God, that they need to depend on God, that mommy and daddy need to depend on God too for their lives. You know, what great examples that we can show to our kids and our families and our friends and our church family. You know, this Sunday we're going to be having a, a baptism um, for Zachary and Henry Yankee. And, you know, what a blessing that is that their parents are essentially saying, we depend on God. And we're, we want you to depend on God too. We want to put you into God's hands and say, Lord, here are your children. They are yours. Please watch over them and care for them and care for us too. And this applies to all of us. Lord, my life, my soul are in your hands. And I trust you with my whole life, with all my soul. I trust in you and depend on you to be by my side. And I know that you're dependable, that you, you won't go back on your word, that you will continue to strengthen my faith and my reliance on you, and you will watch me all the days of my life until you bring me to my heavenly home. Lord, I depend on you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ. Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God of grace and truth, so often we find ourselves depending on me or depending on us. Please forgive us for this when we haven't trusted you fully with our whole heart, with all our mind, with all our body. Please give us strength. <laughs> to rely on you, that you have our best interests, that our eternal life is in your hands, and that you will direct our lives and all, all things to your glory. Lord, forgive us for the times we have fallen. Lord, forgive us for the times we have made mistakes. But Lord, thank you for being our God. Thank you for being dedicated to winning salvation for us by giving up your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross so that we can have life with you. Help us to instruct our, our, our families, our kids, our friends and family to, to rely on you all the days of our life until you bring us to our heavenly home. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father, have, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep us. Amen. You may be seated. We conclude with the closing hymn.
Good evening. Uh, a special welcome to our guests and visitors. Uh, it's always a pleasure to worship with you. Uh, there's kind of several announcements that we have. Uh, Ford and Christ magazines are available. You could pick one on your way up. And there's, the meditations are also available. If for some reason you would like a copy but haven't been getting one because we've been running out, um, please let us know because then we could always order more. And so just kind of let us know if you've been kind of missing out on, on them. But they are there now and they should be stocked. The congregational meeting will be on November 6th. Uh, we'll be discussing and doing elections. So the secretary, the person that we have running right now, is Daryl Yonke. And then Elder Jake Dobratz, Deacon Mark Nelson. We typically like to have, you know, two people run for this. Uh, so if you are still interested in doing a secretary, elder, or deacon and running, or if you know somebody that would, please let me know. Uh, the quarterly financial statements are in your mailbox, so that is there. Again, just thank you for all the support that you give to your church. Uh, we, we really appreciate that. If it be here or, or at St. Paul, um, what a blessing that, you know, it's God's people who, you know, give willingly and from the heart to give thanks to the Lord, and, and the Lord uses those gifts to bless His church. <laughs> And what a blessing they are to, to be able to do ministry and to do the work that we can um, is very is a great blessing. Uh, the Sunday school will be singing on Sunday, uh, so uh, they'll be singing "Amazing Grace" at the end of the service. So uh, maybe we'll see if we can record that part if you'd like to watch it. Uh, baptism, we'll be having a baptism, and then there's a joint Reformation service at Trinity and Coleman. Um, they are hosting the Reformation service on October 30th at 4 p.m. Uh, with dinner to follow at 5.30. All are welcome to join. So uh, we'll have our service normally on Sunday, and then if you would like to join that, uh, feel free to do so. If you weren't here last week, I think most of you were, but if you weren't here last week and missed the family care presentation, that is available online. We recorded it, and it's now posted for everybody to watch. And so if you ha didn't have the opportunity to be here, I would encourage you just to watch it and kind of get an understanding of where our church is going. I also gave the presentation at St. Paul as well, um, just so that they had an understanding of what we're trying to do and what you know options that they have uh, in serving their Lord at their church as well. So it's a, a, a good way to always be thinking, you know, how can we serve and help out each other, uh, no matter if a church is in Abrams or Icona Falls or Swamico or elsewhere or Green Bay, you know, we want to serve our Lord and serve them uh, together. So if you have any questions about that or if you have ideas, uh, someone just shared an idea as they were walking in, um, we are happy to hear that um, because sometimes you guys have the best ideas and you know your community very well and what opportunities we have. And we are seeing a lot of opportunities kind of open up to us just to get our name out there and serve our community. So God's blessings on the rest of your week and hope to see you next week.